Uh, the chair now recognizes the gentleman from Florida. So, Mr. Richardson, as I understand the National Science Foundation, they take government money and then they dole it out in the form of grants to colleges and universities that then build censorship tools that big tech then relies on so that big tech has an arm's length away from the censorship that's shaping viewpoint. Is that essentially what your reporting concludes? Essentially, this Track F program, which was through the Convergence Accelerator program, awarded these $750,000 grants to 12 initial projects, and then six of these continued on to have an additional $5 million in funding. Uh, most of these are at universities. Some of them are private companies as well developing these tools, but they are all... all yeah, and we're going to... And Mr. Eisen, I guess my question to you, if, I, if, if you're done texting, um, would be, like... Is that okay with you, what NSF has done? Put your microphone, please. As a veteran of committee staff, I should uh, know better. Uh, Mr. Gates, I have not had the opportunity to uh, study the report. In okay, okay, well, let me go through some of the grant requests then. So the MIT... Might I finish my sentence, well, please, me, Mr. I, Gates? I, I've got, I, I, I've got if I can time. just finish so, the well, sentence. Uh, no, you were finishing your text earlier. I'm going to finish the question. So Mr. MIT, Gates, just for the MIT record, I was asking for the law communities that and governs that. Rural communities are Florida, you'll get susceptible. I'd ask my time to be restored. Yep. Mr. Eisen, Mr. Eisen, the question is, the MIT grant that said that people in rural communities were particularly susceptible to misinformation. Do you have an opinion on that? Uh, I do have an opinion, Mr. Gates. As you know, there are two texts that are holy to me because Mr. Gates and I have talked before. One is our Torah, our Bible that I live by. Uh, I'm an uh, uh, observant person. That is a holy text to me, and I have the deepest respect. And I have traveled to those places. I guess Mr. the problem. I guess the problem, Mr. Uh, can is I that can I please well, finish my answers? The other text that is holy to me is the Constitution. In my quick review of this report, those are my two holy texts, and I share that with the chairman and others on this. I know that. Uh, in my quick review of the report, it appeared to me that a great deal of the evidence uh, related to legitimate sponsorship of scientific and technological research. Okay, well, let me stop you there, Mr. Eisen, because here's the problem. While you indicate that the Torah and the Constitution are your sacred texts, if Americans indicate online that the Bible and the Constitution are sacred to them, the very grants that are being issued by the NSF would deem those people in a separate and diminished class, where no, they would sir. be, oh, it, it indeed, it, it is precisely in the sir, MIT. I have the materials here. No, sir. I, I would request that the committee release the testimony of Kate Starboard, the University of Washington scientist, the former WNBA player. that wasn't NBA this grant. That, that you're, you're talking about a different grant, Mr. Eisen. She yeah. MIT explained, said, she MIT explained. said that if you're rural, if you're part of a military family, if you view the Bible and the Constitution as sacred, then you're going to be, and you know why they said you're uniquely susceptible to misinformation? Because if you think the Bible and the Constitution are sacred, you might not rely on the expert class, yep. Yep. right? You might not rely on all the folks in D.C. and at all the think tanks, and that's really what people have to rely on. And so when, when we're taking government money to go and try to to harm people who have a particular religious view or a particular view on the Constitution, I, w I would think that in that type of a circumstance, we aren't crying wolf when there's none at the door. Mr. Gates, if we can talk about that material in context, if we can have the full context of the committee's investigation, the ranking member has said there are 29 depositions that this okay, committee but Mr. has Eisen, taken. Okay, Mr. this isn't about any of those. This is about the, when MIT wanted the grant that Ms. Richardson was just talking about, right? They went and made a presentation to NSF and they said, here's why you ought to pick MIT in order to do it. And it was to target military families, people in rural communities, people who believed in the Bible and the Constitution. And then guess what? With these AI tools, if you stack that up, Maybe you're a person in a rural community who loves both the Bible and the Constitution. Well, then you're really susceptible to misinformation because the expert class thinks better. No, uh, so that, I, have you seen you the movie? The full have you seen the movie Minority the Report? Have you seen the movie Minority Report? 
Tom Cruise? Yes, I have seen that. Doesn't film. this kind of feel like that? Yeah. That you're trying to do that 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 yeah. it's coming to life before our very may eyes? I, may because I answer? You've got the government funding these predictive analytics to go after Americans. And here's what I think is actually true. It's not that military families and rural Americans and people who love the Bible and Constitution are dumber or uniquely susceptible to anything. It's just they don't think like how the expert class and the National Science Foundation wants them to think. And so they're trying to program what they see so they can control what they behave. And that is the true weaponization this committee will stand against. I yield back. Well done. Well done. The, um, uh, I just correct the record. It wasn't three days after the election. It was three days into the administration. So it was the government in power, the White House saying, take down this tweet, ASAP. Um, that to me is significant. Whatever, you, whatever you, you think. And I would just say this, we are going to keep having hearings on the attack on the First Amendment because as my colleague from Ohio pointed out just a few minutes ago, it is fundamental. We had a witness in our last hearing from Canada, journalist from Canada, and she talked about the, the underpinnings of Western civilization rest on the ability to speak, to debate, and not be afraid, not be intimidated by the government. And to the point from the ranking member, so they didn't take it down. Well, we all know there's this thing called the chilling effect when big government, particularly the White House, is saying to big tech, take down this tweet ASAP. I see you're nodding your head, Mr. Lukanoff. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I, I want to do one last thing. I think you wanted to respond to Mr. Goldman a, a little while ago. Did, we'll give you a chance to do that, and then we'll close the hearing. But uh, did, I think you had a response to something Mr. Goldman said, uh, Congressman Goldman said earlier. If you don't remember, that's fine. We'll go on. But you can put your mic on there if you would. It was frustrating to hear people like, like me and Lee, who have done a great job defending people across the political spectrum over our career, be dismissed as people who only care about uh, the free speech rights of one side of the political fence. I mean, we, we've been, uh, fire has been second to no one when it comes to taking people on all across the political spectrum, and I have the hate mail to prove it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. That's why, as Mr. Bishop pointed out earlier, why, as chair of this committee, I've invited more Democrats than I bet any Republican, maybe, who knows, maybe ever, I don't know, uh, but certainly in this Congress. We've had more people on the left, as you've described, or in the center, or people who were Democrats who say, I'm now independent because I can't take what they're doing. I just don't stand, for, uh, stand with them on their, their efforts to restrict the First Amendment. So again, I want to thank you all for being here, for, for speaking out. And with that, uh, well, I got to do one housekeeping thing. Uh, one house. This concludes today's hearing. We, will th we thank our witnesses for appearing before the subcommittee. Without objection, all members will have five legislative days to submit additional written questions for the witnesses or additional materials for the... <laughs>